Welcome to this new video on IV Physics. Today we will be talking about your internal assessments and how to pick the correct topic to get a high score. Internal assessments are required by all Group 4 courses and it's an opportunity for students to get hands-on experience designing their own experiments and the opportunity to look into a topic they are interested in. One thing to note is that the IA will be graded by your teacher, not the IB. And each teacher has his own set of criteria and may evaluate the same paper differently. Since your teacher will be the one grading, you, you must be sure to get as much input from your teacher as possible to understand what is expected from you. There are five different classifications for IA topics, but in reality, in physics, you only have three options. The three types of IAs in physics are hands-on laboratory experiments, databases, and computer simulations and models. The fourth type are hybrids, which are basically a mix of the first three. And the last type are survey-based IAs. And surveys don't really apply to physics. Most teachers will recommend that you use your own experiments, but it is possible to use an external database or a computer simulation if you can find a useful one and have the necessary skills to do so. The first step will be to brainstorm your research question ideas. First, pick any topic or area of interest within the IB curriculum. Just be aware you'll be expected to understand it well. If you pick something you have not covered in class yet, then you will have to learn it on your own. When you pick your topic, you should consider three things. How can I prove this experimentally? How are these concepts applied in real life? Is there a useful conclusion I can reach with this experiment? The first question will force you to think about the experiment's design before starting while the other two type into your personal engagement and the conclusion of your report. You can find inspiration watching physics videos, reading magazines, reading physics news, looking at examples of what other people have already done. If you have trouble finding something, one way to start could be to see what equipment you actually have available in your science lab. Knowing what you have could be a good starting point when deciding what you want to do. Each piece of equipment can be used in many different experiments, so once you pick one, research how it is commonly used. Some equipments that are commonly available in labs are dynamics tracks, rotational motion systems, optics benches, spectrometers, Taltron tubes, electrometers, Bendigraph generators, coil sets, magnetic field sensors, oscilloscopes, etc. 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 Be sure to ask your teacher about what is available. If you choose a coil set, for example, you can look at several related experiments such as self inductance, flux density, flat polymagnets, mutual inductance, and energy losses, among other things. Another way to find a topic is maybe look at the databases online. Uh, not all databases will be useful, of course, and some might be downright impossible to understand because, of course, they're too hard. Uh, but don't get distraught, even if you don't use the database as a basis for your AI, some databases can still be useful for finding scientific results with which to you compare your experimental results with. Likewise, simulators and computer models will probably not become the pro primary source of your IA, but looking into how they are used in science and technology may inspire you to find something on your own or even complement your experimental results. The sites that are commonly used for databases are the NASA's Astrophysics Database, uh, the Registry for Research Data Repositories, the NIST, and the US Department of Energy's database. Also, other types of common things you can use are the simulators, uh, which includes the PHT, the Apple simulators, the Tractor Physics simulators, Algodo, GeoGebra. But these are really simple programs that 
even though they can be used to as supporting material for your reports, they're not a really good source of main data. Other programs, on the other hand, like MATLAB, Mathematica, and Console, are examples of fully capable programs and simulations that are actually used by scientists, but they will require a lot of skill and work to use. So unless you're, you already know how to use them, or you are willing to spend over 100 hours to learn, I really wouldn't recommend using them in your IA. Finally, there are many ways you can get creative with common household materials that are easily available. For example, a balloon can be used to investigate the relationships between volume and pressure, uh, also between the forces between charged part particles or objects. Uh, you could find the relationship between the frequencies when it's tapped, and you can also find the relationships between acceleration and of different sizes of balloons. Some other things that are really common in the house for our gelatin. Gelatins can be used to find modes of vibration, refractive indices. Uh, you can cut it into different shapes for optics experiments. It can be used as ballistics jelly. You can even examine the electrical, elastic, or light absorption properties of the jelly. There are an infinite number of experiments that can be done with these types of common materials. But the most common ones, of course, you can find the homework's clay, strings, springs, wooden sticks, and rubber bands. Now, once you pick something and you have an idea of what you want to do, you have to develop it into a formal research question. Uh, developing an IA topic into a usable research question will require you to have a thorough understanding of the subject in order to properly define all the variables in the experiment. After planning exactly what the independent variable is, you have to know also what the dependent variable will be and what the controlled variables will be as well. And the research question should clearly reflect that. And it should all, this research question should show the independent variable and has at least one condition that makes the research question more specific and unique. So the basic format of your research question would be to what extent does independent variable A affect dependent variable B in such and such condition C. The most common mistakes when coming up with research questions are simply choosing inappropriate depending and independent variables. These variables, of course, can be inappropriate for a variety of reasons, with the most extreme cases being that a. There is no physics involved. If you ask what is the effect of wave, wavelength on a person's mood, that is just not related to physics. Uh, another problem could be uh, pseudophysics, where there is obviously no relationship between the variables. The effect of the absorption spectrum on this custom, where the dependent and independent variables have no relationship between one another whatsoever. A lot of students get very ambitious and try to do experiments that are impossible because they're too hard. One example could be the investigation of the effect of high altitude winds on missile trajectories or on how the galactic age affects the black hole density of galaxies. In both of these cases, you will not have enough data, you will not have enough resources, and basically you will not have enough information to this leads to finally the last two mistakes students commonly make, which is having something that's too easy. In these cases, if, you, if it's in the book and you can answer the research question just by reading the book, then it's probably too easy. There are many things that the physics book does not cover, uh, which is, and there are a lot of things you can just easily find out more about just by doing a little bit more research. So, in the simplest way to find something new is to find out what happens in extreme cases of known relationships or what happens when the system is not in an ideal scenario. Uh, sometimes the topic of research question can be too general, so just one experiment will not prove it to be true, especially since there are many cases that have to be looked at. In this case, narrow the question down to a very specific item or a very specific situation. Uh, in conclusion, you just have to be creative. Just find something you know 
and it looks then applied. Just by spending a little bit more time doing a little bit more research, you should be able to get a very good research question.